province of any of in, in Canada. Uh, I grew up in Vancouver, uh, and I think the approximate numbers are we get about uh, 2,300 hours of bright sunshine a year. In Vancouver, I think it's more like about 1,800 hours. And uh, I spent one summer working in Kitimat on the west coast, and I remember there were uh, 30 consecutive days in which the sun did not shine. <laughs> so uh, we are very fortunate uh, uh, here with, uh, and it turns out the, the areas in the country where it's sunniest also tend to be windiest because the sun drives a lot of the, uh, the wind. And so uh, the southwestern part of Saskatchewan and southern Alberta tend to be very uh, windy as well. So how can we intelligently make use of this uh, free resource. Um, <clears throat> first of all, uh, your average home uses quite a bit of energy for domestic hot water. Uh, I tried to uh, think about it and get it. Uh, uh, th this is a about a tenth of a watt when it's it's burning, and your average home uh, uses roughly 500 watts of energy continuously to provide hot water. Like it comes on and off, but on average it's roughly about 500 watts. Is that per year? <clears throat> per day? Uh, continuously, yeah. So oh, it, okay. it would be like a, uh, <clears throat> like having 5,000 of these running 24 hours a day. And uh, 5,000 of anything is a lot, but <laughs> this is uh, and it's the second biggest load in most Canadian homes after space heating. And we have uh, uh, virtually every home has, of course, a, uh, a domestic uh, hot water. And uh, so th this is the home that my wife and I and daughter built and, uh, in 1992. And uh, we have a uh, a south-facing uh, rear of the house, and these are solar thermal panels here, and they provide both <coughs> domestic water heating and, uh, and space heating. And I lived in an earlier house in 1979, <coughs> where I built a solar water heater on it, and uh, I got very interested in the technology. The first time I ever saw a solar water heater was in uh, in Kenya. I worked in Kenya for. Uh, two years in the late 60s and there was a house there right on the edge of Lake Victoria that had a solar water heater and I thought gee this is a great idea and I, I sort of thought well it would only work right on the equator but little did I know it does work and uh, I was looking uh, in Japan uh, solar water heaters are very popular in the southern part of Japan you see them uh, quite uh, and uh, it's a, uh, a, a very widespread uh, technology there. Uh, in, in Israel, by law, <coughs> if you build a new house, you have to use a solar water heater. That's the law. And in Spain, though, I think that's the law as well. Um, and uh, you say in, uh, in uh, the Hawaiian Islands. <coughs> and, uh, If you get any any one lesson out of this, or it, uh, conservation first, and uh, there's four things with a solar water or water heating system. You have solar collectors, you have a heat storage, you have some way of distributing the heat, and then you have the end uses for the water heating. And uh, the end uses would be like uh, the biggest ones are, are bathing and showers. Uh, clothes washing, dishwashing, hand washing. So the, the basic issue is if you reduce the need for water heating, uh, you can also reduce the size and cost of the heating system. Uh, and uh, the basic strategy is to use uh, cost-effective uh, energy conservation measures, and one of the simplest ones is, is basically uh, insulation. If you take your standard uh, 
uh, tank that is in most people's homes, uh, it typically has about one inch of insulation around the, uh, the jacket on it. And it loses about 100 watts of energy continuously through its jacket. And uh, so that's about roughly 20% of its consumption is, goes just to keep the, uh, the jacket uh, warm. And uh, one of the simplest ways is to add more insulation on this. And, and I did this on my, my tank. And I cut the heat loss from 100 watts down to about 25 watts. I basically added R20 bats there, placed around here, and then to make it look nice, I have uh, foil back insulation going around there. We'll talk about some other conservation measures. So, what level of conservation measures? Well, let's take a look at, at my own home. <clears throat> there are three adults, a daughter who uh, used to shower until the water went cold, and now it doesn't ever go cold, so she... Um, and we've been measuring it, I, I keep a little diary once a month, I go and read the meters and, uh, you know, read how much... Uh, I've got a sub-meter that measures how much water we're using for hot water and also how much energy for hot water. And uh, over the one year period, we were using 39% uh, less energy than the Canadian average of uh, 225 litres per day per, per family. And, and how did we do that? Well, this is the house. It's not, we don't live in a tent out in the wilderness. It's got all the comforts of home. And, uh, We have all of these measures here, and one thing that we're, I, I bought it but I haven't installed it yet, an Energy Star dishwasher. I'll run through each one of these now and we'll look at it. The first thing is uh, aerating taps. So what are they? These are taps and they have a little air slot on either side here. And when you're drawing water out of the, uh, the taps, it, it uh, induces air you, by the Venturi effect and gives you uh, a feeling of more water than you're actually drawing. So it's it's a small thing, but uh, it uh, it helps a little bit. And like when you're washing your hands, you don't say how many liters am I getting. You're just saying you're you know you're under there for a few seconds. And the second thing we have these uh, these uh, low flow shower heads in the house, and. Uh, it's actually got what they call here a navy valve one. There's a little shutoff valve right here. So you can um, soap up with the water off and then turn the water on. And uh, um, there's a, a, a company called uh, The Incredible Head. And they sell this one at, at uh, Home Depot for, I think it's $10 for a shower head. And it uses about uh, 50% less water than a conventional jar. And yet it, it still gives you a nice... Um, if you've ever been in Europe, a lot of their, their shower heads are just dribbling out. Uh, this gives you a, an invigorating shower, so it doesn't feel like you are. So this is a uh, very cost-effective thing. The second thing, we, we switched uh, over from uh, a front-loading, or sorry, top-loading to a front-loading uh, Energy Star washer. And one of the things I noticed in Europe, uh, you almost never see a top-loading machine there. They all use front-loaders here. And why? I think energy and water are more expensive there. So that's their, uh, their thing. If you're really into conservation, you can actually choose a cold water wash. But that's maybe pushing it for a lot of folks. Uh, next thing is uh, insulation on the pipes going into and out of the tank. Uh, copper is one of the best conductors of heat available. And uh, both the cold water and the hot water pipes coming out uh, 
<coughs> can uh, leach a lot of heat away from the from the building. So here we've just added for the first meter or so uh, uh, piping insulation. Looks like you got both hot and cold there, Ron. Uh, yeah, yeah. Point is that even when it's not running, the the, the uh, cold water, you know, Certainly. the heat is leached okay. up from there. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, here we've reduced the. Uh, uh, we put uh, R20 bats around. We had to cut them like barrel staves, so that they fit around the around the perimeter here. This is an electric tank. You can do this with a gas, natural gas thing, but you have to make sure you leave lots of space here for the air to get in at the, at the bottom and also at the top of the unit. Or when the pilot light goes out. Uh, right, yeah, you need access um, in, that, uh, in that part there. But again, this, this uh, uh, I have a meter on this, and we measured before and after. And before we insulated it, and after, uh, we saved about uh, about 75 watts of energy, and that's uh, on an average base load of about 500 watts. So it's it's you know for maybe 30 dollars worth of insulation, you can following my other investments can return that kind of. Uh, and money. Uh, another device that's on the market now is called a drain water heat exchanger. And what it does 